How are we all? It's, a, it's um, about two and a half years since I was on this Zoom call with CTN, and um, the last time I was on it, uh, halfway through, I managed to have a heart attack. So let's hope that doesn't happen again this morning. So <laughs> I'm keep, keep taking the tablet, so I'm all right now. <laughs> um, so in that event, uh, obviously right in the middle of COVID, um, got me thinking about what I was doing and how, where I was going and, and how it was all happening. I was one, a, a senior leader at a fairly large training uh, organisation in the southwest and um, uh, the, the director of that particular organisation um, didn't like people, which was very strange to be able to, to uh, be a director of a training company and didn't like people. But they were they were only coming from their own hurts and fears and and their past and didn't really know how to to lead and maybe be trained you know uh how to how to lead in in an authentic way and uh, that got me thinking do i really want to continue doing that um that role um or do i want to sort of get involved in something where i can uh, learn more about it myself i mean You've got to blame Frank and Barry for, for me sat here today because, you know, when I met uh, Frank and Barry, they, they started me off the, down on the journey of, of a counterculture. What is different, you know, in the world we see and, you know, be a certain way. And then the counterculture, which, you know, CTN is all about, is that countercultural way of leading and doing business. And, and obviously, you know, Jesus's way of doing business, the kingdom way of doing business, shall we say. So they started me off down that journey <clears throat> of really focusing on leadership. And, you know, the more the more I learned about the counterculture, the more I got agitated about the culture, shall we say. And, you know, but some of you have heard this from me before, but, you know, there is a, an, an epidemic of bad leadership in business in this country and probably in the world I, i'm just focusing on this country but a lot of information we get from the states the states seem to be a little bit ahead of us or um on the way we do leadership but because a lot of the stuff that you read comes from the states which is slightly frustrating in itself isn't it um but so i was i was that you know that leader shall we say in an organization that, that i try to affect uh with little success because the director was you know culture trying to bring a counterculture it was four people trying to bring a counterculture against one person but unfortunately that you know decisions were made so it was very it was a very difficult situation so that that was part of my angst so I thought well I'll go and try and do something different so that's when I decided that um, I'd already done a, um, a life coaching business coaching uh, qualification and uh, with Frank, I'd, I'd done the, the, the strengths, Gallup strengths coaching side of things. Um, but I thought, well, I, I want to do something where I can affect um, the top of the tree, you know, influence the influencers, shall we say, with, with some, some thoughts. So I, I've just completed, a, um, it's a level seven, it's a master's level executive coaching in um, uh, transformational leadership. So, um, and that um, was was a very interesting journey. I, I, you know, I think it was 30,000 words or something I had to do for the um, dissertation and doing the research for that was very, very revealing, to be honest with you. So, <sighs> leadership. What is leadership? I mean, I don't know what you think about when you think of leadership, but every single person sat in their chairs this morning sat here as a leader you know we all know that we're a leader of something we're either a leader of a family or of a community or uh, a business or uh, ourselves and that that being the leader of ourselves is is probably the most difficult thing to do is leading ourselves authentically so what i'm talking about uh, uh, you know in in my company now i my one of my um visions is to have a, a, a you know a world full of transparent transformational authentic um real leaders and um you know that if if the world was full of those people the world would be completely different that would be a, a counter-cultural um scenario 
so like i said in 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 my research i i i i, I really discovered that you know what people were saying is pe uh, leaders are not just born and and i think that was the old thinking that a leader was born a leader and you couldn't you couldn't teach somebody to do leadership <laughs> um so but i you know i disagree with that my my brother he we, i was brought up on a farm and my brother was slightly older than me and he always used to say you know when people were saying all like you know this has come from a food manufacturer how do you manufacture food you can't manufacture food you grow food and and, and i take that back to leadership you can't manufacture a leader you can't just put somebody in the, into a position and say right just because you were a, you know a master thrunge widget maker you're now the leader of an organization that makes thrunge widgets um you can't just do that so you've got to grow that leader and and so where does that growth start that growth starts at the earliest possible opportunity now a lot of a lot of the the um, literature said you know people need that experience you need to join in you need, need to be part of of a um an organization in order to understand how the organization works well you know, my thought process is that you can go back further into schools and into the education system, whereby you can grow a leader by character, developing that person's character, because it's out of your character and your authenticity and who you are, your values, that you are able to lead. And when people see that, um, people follow that particular, um, those values or missions. Um, so and and um, even Oxford University wrote a paper on their courses, uh, and this is 2020. I think they wrote this, um, so it's very very recent. They they produce um, you know very good lawyers, very good solicitors, and and all the fantastic courses they produce. But they recognised that none of those vocations had a leadership scene to them, so they could turn out very good lawyers but they couldn't turn out very good lawyers who could lead in that vocation, which I thought was quite um, uh, sad, really, because that element is really, really critical in helping, you know, growing an organization. You've got a good leader at the top, yet the rest of the organization is gonna be um, looked after, shall we say, and developed. And, and that is really, really where leadership comes I, th I think you know uh, for me it's part of that um if you've got if you've got a toxic person at the top of the organization you've got a top toxic culture and everybody is living under that so everybody's lives are affected by that culture but if you've got an all-empowering humble vulnerable you know transparent value-driven person at the top you know what does that well, i'm saying at the top i'll 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 um, expand that in a minute. Um, how, what does that make the culture of the organization? How do people feel? Well, you know, you're, you're lifting people up, you're developing people, you're you know, making their lives much better. And that's part of my thing. Well, like I said, going back to that organization, I was part of the leadership team of an organization that was hurting people. And I, I didn't want to be part of that. And I wanted to change that and, you know, I'm not saying that was why I caused my caused my heart attack. There were some physical issues that caused my heart attack, but it didn't help. So, you know, I, I decided rather than sitting back and be a passenger, let me see if I can do something about it. So the start the style of leadership that we we all know is um, that servant leader. Um, and I think we all know who was a servant leader. Uh, and recently, obviously, we've just watched the funeral of the Queen and and heard about all her what she did. You know, she was a servant leader and she knew whose servant she was. And, you know, that was a fantastic message, absolutely fantastic message. And her consistency um, through her her leadership was were, was outstanding. And, and she pledged that, you know, and that was a lifelong that was a lifelong relationship that she pledged. 
and you know part of the the servant leader is you you can have a lifelong um relationship so that you know family friends or whatever and you but you can have also that transient um leadership relationship in business you people come and go in business but it's how you affect them and how you how you develop them is is really um important um so our our job as leaders is to be able to prepare others for leadership in the same style. Um, I'm not I'm not poo pooing management, and I'm not poo pooing any of the um, any of the other leadership styles. Um, they've all have their place in certain times. But what I'm concentrating on today is servant leadership and talking about servant leadership. As Frank would say, don't poo poo the poo poo. Um, uh, so. You know, servant leader, you know, you could probably come up with loads of words that describe that, but I've got vulnerable. Um, anybody tried to be vulnerable in a really difficult situation in, in a business uh, situation? It's not easy. It costs you, you know, being humble, forgiving somebody, you know, um, who's talking in, in business, that costs you as well. So, you know, authentic leadership and being transparent will cost you. And are you prepared? to pay the price that that will do for you to, to be that, that servant leader. So uh, leading yourself is an interesting one. And, and it, takes, it takes effort and thought um, and, and, and prayer, obviously. Um, so I did a, a leadership course um, probably five years ago now, and, and it was quite impactful. It was called Interbe. So it was about being a leader not doing leadership it was about being and who you were and and how you how you turned up in a situation and we did lots of stuff about looking at our past fears and and angst and and situations that happened to us that may affect the way that we respond to people in the in the in the moment shall we say and what they did it all distilled down to a, a phrase that they called um the moment before meaning. And in an interaction, if somebody comes to you um, in, in a situation and they might be uh, agitated uh, about the situation, they might be agitated about you or whatever, they call in that, that moment, that input to you, there is a space, there is a moment before any meaning happens for you to return, respond or react. And that's the moment before meaning. And that is, is a space that we, we can fill with the right things. So I'd, I'd heard about this before, and some of you may have heard me uh, mention the, the, the Austrian uh, psychiatrist, Viktor Frankl. And he says, um, between the stimulus and response, i.e. the input to you and your response is a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. And in that response lies our growth and our freedom. So we can actually choose how we respond as a person, but I'm talking about leadership as well. And this wasn't a, a, a Christian course, but when I came away and reflected on what they were saying was, I was thinking, well, you know, we talked about all the, all the fears, you know, if I, if you come up against somebody that's, you know, got a blue shirt on, let's say, um, and, and I, 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 let's say I go to Frank and I, I start giving him large uh, about a situation and he then recalls a situation with somebody uh, with a blue shirt that caused him real issues in the past. He potentially could overlay his thoughts and practices that happened to him when that situation didn't go well onto me. Uh, so he would react out of his past experiences, not from the here and now. Um, and so that's, that's what they're saying is about how do you clear that? Well, I thought, well, you know, if, if we're following our, um, our leader, should we say, you know, he, he, Jesus came along and taught us, and you can overlay, for me, it was the fruits of the spirit. You can, you can respond out of the fruits of the spirit to that person in love or, you know, in forgiveness, faithfulness, kindness, goodness, you know, all the different, 
different things, you can choose to come from one of those positions and not from an angry position or, or a, 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 a position of fear. Um, because you're trying to, you know, you're trying to develop that person and help that person be, a, a, you know, the best leader that they can be, um, even though they're just coming to you maybe as a, you know, a fringe widget maker at that particular time. I don't know what fringe widgets are, by the way, I've just made that up. But um, so a fringe widget maker, but you want them to take your uh, place as the, the leader of that organization. So you want to show them how to how to respond, should we say. Um, so that, you know, that is about growing yourself. Um, and be before you can really grow other people, you have to have developed yourself, uh, I, I believe. And so that's where, for me, the coaching comes in, is not only helping people grow, uh, organizations grow, but it's also helping people grow. And that's the tr transformational side um, of, the, of the leadership. Um, there is a, if you, if you imagine a ladder, um, and this ladder has certain logical behaviors on it. So at the bottom, there's environment, behaviors and capabilities. So if you're, if you're concentrating on developing people's uh, behaviors and capabilities, i.e. getting them to be better fringe widget makers, shall we say, and, and putting them on training courses, that's, that's a, a, a transactional um, side of things. So that's about making things happen. That's the doing side of it. But if you go further up the ladder, you start talking about um, values, identity, and your purpose, which is a transformational side of things. And that's where transformational coaching comes in, because you're talking about people's values and beliefs. You know, what are your values and beliefs? Um, what is your identity? Whose are you? Well, you know, we, we talk about the, you know, a lot about the, the father heart. Um, we've had sessions on that before, and, and I'm sure people have heard about that. But it's about, how, you know, and that, that, that's a non-gender father heart. That's, that, that's just an expression that's used. Um, uh, so, you know, it's about how, how you, who are you? Who are you as a person? And can people see that? Are you transparent? Are you the same every day? Are you consistent? when in those dealings or you know does it depend on what color shirt i wear as to your re reaction to me you you know it's about responding consistently and and you know jesus responded consistently didn't he 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 knew who's he who he was and his values and what his his purpose was he knew all that and he responded out of that out of that um knowledge and that belief you know deep deep down he knew he knew and he developed his his leaders, his disciples, didn't he? He, he you know, they, they messed up, and it, you know, he didn't um, shout and scream at them and and run around. He he, you know, responded out of all those you know fruits, shall we say, and 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 more. Um, so, uh, you know, for me about growing, the the angst that I've got about leadership, I suppose, is that we don't start early enough there's not enough um emphasis on behavior I'm, i mean right back in in the, the the good old days should we say when everything was in black and white and frank and barry and i uh, met we did actually go and lobby the government about putting behavior and character into schools um uh, we didn't get very far because it was a bit of a brick wall but we we did actually go and do that so this is a not a new story for me um but the 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 fact of, of the leadership um the transformational leadership i suppose and that authentic um style of things and the more i i look at things the more i realize you know we're, we've just been come through a pandemic but i i i think there's a pandemic i'm you know i might be over egging the pie here but i think there's a pandemic of bad leadership so if you think of a, a from a servant leader point of view, um, let me just explain what I what I believe on the on that. So if you think of a triangle the right way up, you know, and this is what I said that leader doesn't necessarily be at the top, but right at the very beginning, if you know the the vision and values for 
your organization that might be a you know church or it might be a a school it might be the the you know the business you're working in whether that's a you know a four-man band or a multinational you know conglomerate should we say th that organization has to have visions and values and you have to have the vision and values if you're at the top so you the job of the leader to start off with is to is to communicate those visions and values uh, out to the organization however that might be so that's that way up and all your followers are down at the bottom of the triangle once you've done that you've cast that vision you've then got to implement that vision and the whole triangle turns upside down and the servant leader supports all those people at the, at the base of the triangle which is at the top shall we say along here are all your followers to be the best thrunge widget maker or leader of thrunge widget maker and when they become the best that they can possibly be, the organization becomes far, far better. It's an exponential um, development. If you, if you try and be the top of the tree all the time, the organization is only gonna be as good as you are. And however good we all think we are, that, you know, that is a limiting factor. So, but it's exciting. I think it's exciting to help people develop. It's frustrating. And as I said, it costs you, it costs you dearly in, in emotional, um, uh, and thought process and sleepless nights a lot of the time. Um, so here's another, here's another thought. In order to, to do that triangle and to support and cast the vision and, and be the best person you've got to be, um, servant leader, it, it's well documented, so, you know, that the theory is that the servant leader has three um, parts to it. Servant, servant leader has three parts to it. And think of a cake, you know, we all know what a cake looks like. Let's cut that cake into three. So you've got three equal parts. So one part of that cake is task. So it's about doing. It's about, you know, helping that, that, that organization and, and doing all the various bits and pieces that, you know, as a leader, you might be, you know, nipping out to get the toilet roll because it's, <laughs> it's been forgotten or whatever it might be. You're, you're doing all the things that a leader might do. Um, you look at, you're, you're doing the people thing. So you're looking after the people, you're developing the people and all the rest of it. And the third part, which I'll challenge people on this call, equal part is thinking. So how many people think or pray, shall we put pray in there as well? Uh, think or pray a third of their leadership time. Now, I don't. <laughs> I'm being honest. I may have been vulnerable here. I don't do thinking as much as I should do. Uh, you know, I do the people thing and I do the task thing. But thinking is very, very much, uh, you know, and praying about things, it should be a third of, of what a leader does in an organization or a leader does in you know, being a leader, like I said, in the community, in your family or whatever you're praying about. Uh, and so, you know, that that is a, a quality part of it. And, you know, coming back to coaching, um, that's why I, I love coaching, because you're you're creating a deep a space for deep thinking. You're you're allowing that that leader to be able to think. And my word, sometimes, you know, when you when there's that light bulb moment or is that deep thinking moment uh, transformation happens and it, it all comes through thinking and, and praying deep thinking when I'm talking about to, I'm not thinking about you know uh, we were talking about this in our, um, our life group last night and you know some people were saying oh you know we we think a lot because we're overthinkers and and we I said yeah you know uh, we can overthink things but what I'm thinking about what I'm talking about is not necessarily overthinking a situation. It's about thinking deeply about what matters to you, what you know, who you are, uh, how you're how you're pro progressing in life, and and what you're going to do with the organisation. How's the organisation or the family or the community going to happen? And uh, you, it can be the smallest thing, but you know, in that that coaching conversation where you've got a transformational coaching conversation in your you know my job is to ask questions from a coach point of view that you may not want to uh, ask yourself so that then invokes thinking in different directions and and that is a very freeing um situation to be able to to have space to think um and and there's a great book i don't know if anybody's ever read it by a, a lady called nancy klein and it's called um 
time to think. And the, the, believe it or not, there's a whole, um, uh, whole new thing about thinking. We could, we could do a whole load of sessions about thinking and having, uh, you know, creating thinking environments in your, uh, uh, for yourself and for your organization. Um, and one great thing that she says about when you set up a meeting, I'll just throw this in, when she says when you set up a meeting is everybody sat around the table, you turn to the person next to you and you tell them what you appreciate about them right at the very beginning of the less, uh, beginning of the thing. And then you go right around the table. So you start with a mutual um, appreciation um, meeting that everybody in that room is you know, it's I'm okay, you're okay situation, which I, you know, I think is is really good. So, you know, get, going back to the thinking thing, you know, we can have numerous examples of where Jesus took himself off and and prayed and thought about stuff, and he came from from that position, and he he acted out of out of that that prayer uh, and knowing, you know, uh, we all know that. I don't need to um, need to go into that. You see, Rick Warren. Uh, you know, one of the things that I haven't got it here, but it's he he's one of the little things that I've got stuck up. It says your character is essentially the sum of your habits. So this is where I say about growing, you know, the more the more you do it, the more it becomes a habit. So if your habit is to shout and scream and yell at people with blue shirts, then that's not always, um, you know, the right thing to do. But if your habit is to stop and think, what's the moment before meaning here? How do I respond to this and not react? that then becomes a habit that in that moment, you're, you're automatically going to a good place and not a bad place. Easy for me to sit here and say, easy for you to sit there and listen, but it's not, not so you go and try it. You know, we've all tried it and we've, we, you know, we've all failed. <laughs> we, we all do things out of the moment and, uh, and then out of a situation. So it, it, does, it does take time and uh, coming back to, you've got to grow leaders and not manufacture them. And, you know, uh, there are lots, lots of different, uh, we, we uh, Frank and I and, and Barry always talked about the kingdom, the culture, counterculture. And I'll just finish on this, this last little um, ditty that um, I'm always looking for some, something. When I, when I was running my team, um, I was always looking for kingdom principles that I could apply um, to and see, see how they worked. And one, one, one thing that I did is if anybody came to me and said, oh, you know, um, Mary's really cheesed me off this morning. They haven't been doing this, blah, 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 blah. Can you have a word with them? And I go, no, you go and have a cup of coffee with them and sort it out yourself. Um, you know, that's the first step. Go and, go and sit with them, go and find them um, and, the, you know, have a chat with them. And again, that makes that person vulnerable because they've got to go back to that person that they've just had a bit of a, a Barney with. Um, and so it takes, it takes, uh, takes effort to do that it's going to cost them to go back so they you know they go back and I said if you if that doesn't work out I'll come and sit with you and we'll see if we can sort it out between the three of us and if that doesn't work we're going to have to go to HR because we can't have two people in an organization that are at one another's throats so you may recognize that that comes from you know uh, Matthew 18 um, if your brother sins against him go and tell him what his faults are um, uh, and if he doesn't listen to you, get one or two others to come and um, have a listen. And if they don't, if they don't listen, then um, take it to the church. And uh, you know, I've I paraphrased that obviously, um, but that's the principle. And do you know, I, I'm I'm going to say 99 times out of 100, but that makes it sound like I've got loads of people that were arguing. But nine times out of 10, that worked right at the very beginning. They would have, go and have a cup of coffee together, and usually it's a misunderstanding. Oh, I thought you meant so and so. Oh no, no. Oh, oh well, all right, you know. And and off we went, and that that was it. But after a while, they didn't come to me. They went and had a cup of coffee to start off with because they knew what I was going to say. If they hadn't done the first phase, and uh, failed or succeeded, they didn't come back to me, unless there was a you know, there was a bigger problem. So, for just summing it all up, you know, leadership, servant leadership. Is, is about growing yourself uh, and then growing others. It's, it, you know, servant leadership puts a, as much um, emphasis on um, developing people as it does developing the bottom line. 
and that's where I think uh, a lot of organizations fall over because the bottom line becomes so important, people are just used and abused rather than empowered. And, you know, so many times I've seen it in where I've worked, if you just turn that triangle upside down and empower those people that are working for you, it, it changes the whole thing. And, and since the pandemic, all the, all the latest leadership stuff, and I'm sure some of you may have read this, is that people are looking for that authentic leadership style. They're not, they don't want to work for the concrete corporate. They, they want to be part of something that's meaningful, that, that has meaning in their life. And the younger generation, um, they all want to be, you know, part of something bigger than themselves and they want, they want to feel part of it. So all level transformational leadership is also on the rise and what people want to know that. And if you're a senior leader and you've got, you're developing really, really good leaders below you, you've got to be sure on who you are and not fearful. And so, so the whole thing is moving towards that all level, you know, flat structure, all level leadership, transformational leadership, which is the, you know, I want to work for you because I believe in your values and I want to work with you rather than just earning the wage and, and being the best sponge widget um, maker I can be. Um, so things are moving, things are shifting. And, and, you know, my desire is, or my vision is, and my hope is that the world will be filled with authentic, you know, transparent, um, go get them, the transformational leaders who are servant leaders. There we are. Thanks, Terry. Any questions? Al, can we uh, end the recording, please? Just give me a minute. Um...